Star Wars watch along? Yes, I do want to do that. So I've actually been re-watching Star Wars in my spare time. Like while I was sick, I sat down and I watched all three of the prequels. <laughs> I watched all three of the prequels, and it, the prequels is such an interesting mixed experience for me because I love the story of the prequels. I love the story behind the political intrigue and how even in The Phantom Menace, where when you watch The Phantom Menace, it doesn't feel like fucking anything is happening. The Phantom Menace f feels like a nothing movie. It's empty. There is fucking nothing going on. But then, then you watch Attack of the Clones and it's like, oh, some of that shit from Phantom Menace is coming back. Then you watch Revenge of the Sith and you see all of those little dominoes that were set up across the, the previous two films get knocked down in very satisfying fashion. It's just such a shame that such a fantastic story is limited by some of the worst acting and the worst dialogue in any blockbuster film I've ever seen. Like, I, I, I give Marvel shit for the annoying quips, but Jesus Christ if the prequels aren't just the worst criminals in that. I love Obi-Wan. I don't think Obi-Wan has, has ever done anything wrong. And really, I think that the prequels are at their best. The prequels are at their best when they have a... Um, a really good, well-established actor who can take George Lucas's shitty dialogue and just sort of roll with it. Like Ewan McGregor, like, um, Ian McDiarmid, like fucking, what's his name? Ah, uh, Christopher Lee. You know, anyone, anyone from the prequels who has, like, a history in acting and who can hold their own even with a shitty director like... G George Lucas is not a shitty director by any means, but he's not very good at working with actors. Yeah, they are hated for that reason, but I personally really enjoy- I think the prequels are a mixed experience. Phantom Menace is ass. Uh, Attack of the Clones is better than I remember it being, because there's actually, like, stuff happening, and some of the political intrigue is pretty interesting. The romance with Anakin and Padme is completely insufferable, but... It's worth it because of how much happens because of that romance, you know, and it's like, I don't know. As a Star Wars fan, whenever I watch Anakin and Padme, I'm constantly just coping. I'm constantly like, yeah, you know, he acts this way because of this. Like, oh yeah, you know, he's a kid born into slavery and then he got sold into the Jedi Order, which is like an institution and all that. Of course he's gonna be weird. And I'm like, Padme, she just has terrible taste in men, you know, like, sure. I just, you know, there's like, there's so much, there's so much wrong with them, but I, I don't really mind, to be honest. I, I, I've, I've, gr I grew to love them. The prequels gave us General Grievous. This is true. The prequels gave us General Grievous, and I'm very pleased about that. I'm getting so efficient at this extra lives farming route. Honestly, like, when I watched the prequels, it kind of felt like... Well, I think this is pretty much get, pretty much confirmed that, you know, everyone involved in the making of the film never had the balls to say no to any of George Lucas's terrible ideas, like Jar Jar in the first film. Jar Jar was the only thing that kind of got phased out because George got insecure when everyone fucking hated Jar Jar. Every time I saw him, I just... Something, oh god, I can't believe we took Star Wars and then we had lines like Jedi Poodoo and all that kind of shit. It's so fucking weird. I feel like, yeah, no one had the balls to say no to any of George Lucas's shitty ideas. And so at some points, the, the best thing about the prequels is the music and the story. The story itself, the political intrigue, the slow downfall of the Republic, everything wrong with the Jedi. Like, when you don't, when you can look past the shitty dialogue and you can actually think about the story itself in, like, sort of a vacuum, it's really compelling stuff. It's very cool and creative. And you can really tell that George Lucas came up with and invented that story in the prime of his career when his talent was at its highest. Because even though you can't really see it through the dialogue, the story itself is super fucking interesting. Um, and also the music. I mean, even for, for, for maybe the shittiest film romance ever portrayed, we got Across the Stars, one of the best, like, romance themes I've ever heard. John Williams was setting the fucking orchestra on fire every time he made a single attempt at music. And it was beautiful. 
Yeah, the dialogue was just ass, and I think that's because- There were some scenes that, like, the, the scene in Attack of the Clones where there's the conveyor belt that Anakin and Padme are on and they're gonna try and save Obi-Wan. Um, that scene was written while George Lucas was in the car on the way to go and shoot that exact scene. And you can fucking tell. You can't tell anything that's going on in that scene. It's so messy and all over the place. It's so weird. Look at how fucking efficient I got. My muscle memory with this is insane. So yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get around to watching the originals and the sequels again, and I'm so excited to watch the sequels again. Specifically, very excited to watch seven and eight. Might just skip nine. I don't want to watch it again. I like I can't believe, I cannot believe that with all the money in the world and all of the feedback and like sort of warnings from the prequels in the world, Disney managed to create a Star Wars film that is so much worse than the prequels in every conceivable way. Because even though the prequels are so flawed and so mi and not miserable to watch, like so silly and so cringe in some ways, they manage to be better than Rise of Skywalker was that manage they managed to make Rise of Skywalker look so bad because Rise of Skywalker managed to be genuinely miserable as an experience. Like, honestly, one of the worst films I have ever seen. It's- I hate The Rise of Skywalker, and there are only three films in existence that I hate. It was an overcorrection from 8. Right, exactly. An overcorrection from 8, which was a fantastic fucking film. And I am not taking criticism. I will not be listening to any of The Last Jedi slander. Because Ryan Johnson took The Last Jedi in a very interesting direction. It understood the mythology that made the original trilogy so interesting. He didn't give a fuck about Reddit theories about who was who. Episode 8 is my favorite Star Wars movie. I like it more than Episode 5. Because he took a well-established universe mythology and he took it in an extremely interesting direction that was then overcorrected because fucking stupid nerdy Star Wars fans could not stand that their preconceived notions about an honestly mediocre lore and backstory was being challenged. He created an incredible story that managed to give every character involved a really satisfying conclusion and gave J.J. Abrams everything he needed to make Star Wars a brand new IP accessible to a brand new generation in a really interesting way that was entertaining four adults as well, and he fucked it up and made Rey a Palpatine, which is the stupidest fucking plot to us when you had the most interesting fucking twist from the last film, which was that Rey's heritage doesn't matter and that she as a woman is strong enough to not owe her pro- to not owe her fucking power to a man that she can actually be her own person, and so is implied, so can you, the audience. So can you owe your power only to yourself because you yourself are special in every conceivable way. That apparently did not matter enough to JJ Abrams. I'm dead. I'm so mad. I'm so mad about what they did. I wa- <laughs> I wanted to walk out of episode 9 feeling elated with a big smile on my face, but I just walked out feeling fucking betrayed. I was so upset with how that film turned out, as you can probably imagine. So yes, not looking forward to watching that again. Might just skip it in the end. For my money, I feel- for my money, I feel like you might as well end the, the franchise with episode 8. You might as well, because, you know, think about the ending to episode 8. There is, like, I don't know, like, there are some loose ends, because it is the middle film in the trilogy, but it just- Oh, God. It is the middle film in the trilogy, but, you know, we're on 60 lives. I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the Vox Akuma Star Wars rap.